Hello and welcome to a new Lightwave tutorial. My name is Leandrew and today I'm going to show you how to create an antimatter explosion. So uh, I came up with this nice method and I actually used it on Star Trek Intrepid. This is uh, what the clip was. Many of you have actually asked me how to create something similar than that and uh, I thought I'll actually go ahead and show you exactly how I created it. We also need to create something very specific so what we're going to need is a star object. Now the quickest way and best way to do it is actually use the standard light that's in a scene, a default scene setup. Let's uh, go all the way to 000, zero, zero to get it positioned. Go into the light properties, take this down to zero and this down to zero two. Now lens flare options, get rid of the red outer glow and central ring, we don't need any of those. Get rid of random streaks, use anamorphic streaks and we'll go down to four point star. And we also need fade with distance. And now we need to go to the modify tab, move, lock the X and Y axis because we don't want to move it anywhere else and just Pull down with the mouse towards the camera, so that's about here. And uh, F9 for a quick preview and see if the star is actually as close as it can be. Yep, that's actually fantastic. And then we want to change the camera properties to get it down to like uh, 400 pixels, I'd say. So now another quick render. There we go. That's that's fantastic. So this 400 by 400 pixels. Uh, pre-render. It doesn't need to be high def or anything like that. We'll just save it on the desktop and call it star. Okay, now that we've actually created the texture, uh, if you haven't already, clear the scene. Uh, we're going to start fresh here and then we go to the items tab and we've got to add something so that's why we go to the items and under there we go add dynamic object and go to particle. So this is a single emitter just click OK on there. Now uh, we've got the properties here. Um, I normally close that down and then go to properties dynamic and double click on here just so I can see how many particles are actually being generated while I'm changing the actual values so what I found um, is go to birth rate 300 so this is quite a nice setting we want to generate by seconds and change this to cone not sphere what I normally would do is limit this to 10,000. Now normally it's not going to go higher than four to 5,000 to any of the experiments that I've been doing, but just in case it does go any higher and you don't want to bog down the rendering times, I always say the maximum limit is 10,000 particles. Okay, so now we're going to change over to particle itself. There we go. So particle weight, we'll put down 0 0.2. Then we need particle resistance, 0 0.0433. And then lifetime, I normally like to have 70 frames. And because we want to have some kind of flickering after the particles are dying off, we also add 15.5 frames. So that's about it for this section. OK, and in motion, uh, velocity 100% is OK. So we're going to, because it's an explosion, we're going to put down a value of 2.92. That's a quite nice one. You can obviously change the value to whatever you desire, but I found this to be uh, just right. And uh, go to vibration uh, 0 0.0102, and uh, the rest will just leave as 000. So we're actually done in this tab. And uh, as the last one, go down to etc and loop frame. Uh, I put down 100, and that's all we need to do for the actual particle settings. So just close that tab. Now after that, we're going to go to the actual um, particle uh, properties. So go to volumetrics and fog options. And in there, we've got to add hypervoxels. Double click on that. And we've got our nice option panel here. So double click to activate the particle emitter, or the actual options of the particle emitter. Uh, we can show the particles. So we've got them here. And then we'll set this, so the actual particle size, a single particle here. We'll set the size to 642.8. 894, sorry, uh, millimeters. Size variation, well, you can put it in, but uh, for this antimatter explosion that, that I'm going for, I left that away. Align to path, take blending out, we don't need that. 
Okay, so now we've got that set, and the next very important part is to actually set the transparency. Now we're going to use this T for the texture, but we're not actually going to choose a color. We're we're going to determine the um, transparency. So now we've already got a layer in here. We can change that to gradient. There we go. Leave this to blending mode normal and layer opacity 100%. That's all fantastic. Now we've got to make sure that the input parameter is particle age. So we've got that set, and. Uh, just to make sure we've got this highlighted, we'll click on this part here, on this arrow bit, so now we can see the values. And then in here, put down 7.5%, alpha 100%, and parameter 0. Okay, and the parameter actually represents how far this is going down, so see the higher parameter, the further down the arrow goes. Because I've already got the next one selected, that's brilliant, we'll just use a different value. So we've got value here, 100%, 100% again, and then 29 Four seven, there we go, and I uh, just got to make sure that uh, I'll just put down to sixty because those were the values that I recorded when I was doing that. So my actual project had sixty frames. There we go. So um, click on the next one, and its values are eighty nine point three six nine nine percent, and then alpha is one hundred percent. It's forty nine point six three two. There we go. So I've got that already in place. Fantastic. And then we'll create another one. And the last one is at 0%, alpha 100%, and the positioning is 59.79. There we go. So we're finished with that. We can uh, use this texture. Uh, actually, we can uh, close down this, but we don't actually need that. Now we'll go down to shading. That's where we actually set the color. Also, we've got to make sure that we've got object types that uh, change to sprite. There we go. Okay, and now we've got the actual options that we want to have just so we've got a nice sort of color going. I don't know, maybe something light yellow. I just used that to, uh, it's more easier to see if you're doing something wrong or not. So if you like press F9 now, then uh, you, you can see the details a bit, a bit different. If you actually use red, it's too dark to see any difference. So I could have gone with white, but sometimes white um, is overlapped and you're not sure because of the transparency if it's really working. So I normally use some yellow or orange, just something like that, you know. Uh, you can choose any color you want. It's just something for me uh, easier to see. So we'll just go down and set this uh, luminosity to 96%. Opacity 11.5 and density 73.5. The actual light that we're going to use is the one that's in the scene, so we'll, so we'll just use that. Clips we won't use at all, we don't need anything in there. Um, but what we've got to do is also set the texture and now this is where we go and get the star that we created. So make sure it's an image map, blending mode normal, layer opacity 100%. Planar is fine, so now we just got to go and load our star. So there we go, that's the one that I created and saved. So we'll just go and open that. Then make sure that we've got width tile and height tile to edge, both of them. Take off pixel blending and mipmap quality is off. Okay, so everything else is fine. I've uh, just got to use texture here. And uh, go to hyper texture. And in here, turn off the uh, preset texture. We don't need that. We'll uh, up the amplitude texture to 333.5%. And we just got to make sure that we scale the actual particle to two meters on all axis. And there we go. Then we can close that down now. So this should actually be our finished product. So just press F9 to do a quick pre-render. Okay, that doesn't look too bad yet. Um, let me just pull the camera back a bit. But there you go. This is basically what I've been doing. And um, depending on the project, I use other, you know, more particles with the birth rate and uh, also have a colored texture. But in this case, I just used a plain white one so you can see what I'm doing. And again, you know, if you move the uh, timeline back and forth, you can see it's emitting those particles. And here, here are some examples using different kind of textures, but. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. You can see what you what what's possible. So um, I hope you like that. And until next time, take care.